Hello there, I'm a lovely jewelry makers. I'm Christina of CSL Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to make this beaded wire crochet bracelet. So you can really achieve some nice and elegant designs with this technique, and the final piece has a lovely movement to it as well. So if you want to learn how to make your own, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to need. Now first of all I'm using this 0.4mm regular round copper wire. You can also use a 0.3mm. It's just going to give you a slightly finer look so it depends what you prefer. And then the beads that I'm going to be adding are these 4mm rounds. Now I'm just using this lovely blue colour to contrast against the copper wire. Of course you can use whatever you want to. And then as for the findings, I'm using these ribbon ends here to finish off the ends of the bracelet nice and neatly. And then I'm going to use this extender chain, a lot of claw clasp with the jump rings to attach the ribbon ends. And of course we also need our most important tool here, our crochet hook. So I'm using a metal 1.25mm crochet hook. Now I'm going to have the material list and links that you might need in the description box down below. Otherwise let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. Now to make this piece I'm going to be working with my wire still attached to the rail here because obviously crochet is going to be using a fair bit of wire but also you don't really know how much you're going to use so it's easy just to leave it on the reel and I've just got this nice wire tamer you could call it just keeps the wire nice and neat on the reel so I'm just going to release a decent length to work with and then before we start doing any crochet, we need to add our beads onto this length of wire first. So I'm just putting the reel just out of the way here. And then I've got the end of the wire. Now obviously you can just take your beads and add them. But what I find, if you have beads on a strand, a much quicker and easier way to do it is that instead of taking one or two beads off at a time and then adding them to the wire, what you can do is leave them on the strand and then take the end of the wire here and start feeding them through. So put the wire through the beads while they're still on the strand. Makes it go much quicker and obviously making sure to not miss any. So just feeding it through and then when you have the wire through some beads you can start to basically slide them off of the strand and then they will just literally go onto the wire only. So it's a much quicker and easier way if you obviously have the beads on a strand. And then we already have all these beads on here instead of doing them one at a time. So once I've added my beads here you just want to push them down the wire as far down as they'll go for now because we'll start out not use them just yet we just kind of need to get going with our crochet first of all so I'm going to grab my crochet hook here and then I'm using the wire towards the end and I'm just going to kind of grip it a bit further in so we leave a short little tail and then I'm holding the short tail there kind of towards me over my fingers and then the long end of the wire that's attached to the reel and putting over my index finger and then comes down behind and then I'm going to take my crochet hook here and just put it underneath so between my finger and the wire and first of all we just kind of need to make the initial loop so I'm just putting it through and make sure to get it to this wider part before the grip so the shaft of the crochet hook then I'm going to twist it around a full round so, when I take this out, we already have a loop. And then, what we need to do is make sure I've got the short little tail there on the side with the palm of my hand. And then the long end is coming down behind. Now, I want to then obviously from this loop here be able to continue. So, I'm just going to kind of use my crochet hook to keep the shape but then put it in a position that I want. So I'm pushing it backwards a little bit towards the other wire. You can push that up behind because then what we need to do is the crochet hook comes through the loop and then we want to grab onto the wire here, the long end at the back. So it's a little bit fiddly right now to hold on to because there's not a lot to hold on to, that's also why we have that tail. But 
we make sure the crochet hook goes over the wire at the back and then we pull it back making sure we grip the wire to bring it with us come through the loop and then once we have it just a slight little bit and coming through the loop on this side here I then push my crochet hook through again to this wider part so the shaft just before the grip and then just pull it a little bit extra so we now have kind of a loop coming through the first initial loop now what we need is for this to kind of be flat with each other so we need the loops to sit flat next to each other which means I'm keeping hold of my initial loop there just below it then the loop that we just pulled through I'm going to take my crochet hook and again shape this so I'm kind of twisting my crochet hook so this loop ends up sitting in the same direction as the other one and then I want to kind of push it backwards a little bit to make it so the two loops are flat next to each other and we're looking from the side so like that and I now have two loops here the two first loops so continuing again we have the long end coming behind I take my crochet hook it's through the loop that we just made go over the wire bring it back with you using the hook and then when we're just on this front side of the loop we push a hook through to that shaft part and pull it a little bit extra just kind of open up the loop a bit more and again you can see it's sticking out through the other loop so we need to use the crochet hook to flatten it so first we twist and then flatten it against our finger you could say to make that also sit next to the other one so we're basically now making a row of loops one after the other so that's three now we need to make one more initially so same thing make sure to go over the wire bring it back with you push the hook through pull it out a little bit extra and then turn and push it back a bit to flatten it out you can see now we have four loops so this is our starting point now these loops that we're making right now are what's going to determine how wide this bracelet is going to be so I'm personally making it four loops wide you could also make it more or less of course depends how you how wide you want yours to be but I'm just going to do four I think that's a nice medium so it's not too wide balls or not too narrow but then what we're going to do is I'm going to make another loop and every time by the way as well I make a loop I keep moving my fingers here up where I'm holding so I start down here and every time I make a new loop I move up to be right below that a new loop I move up to be right below that just to keep more control and you can also go back through your loops and use your crochet hook to kind of even them up if you need to because we're using the crochet hook itself this part the shaft part on the crochet hook to kind of make it nice and even and determine the size of the loops throughout the whole bracelet so I have my four loops now what we need to do is start making the next row so we need to kind of step up one you could say so I'm gonna again take my crochet hook over the wire being through that loop the very last one bring the wire back through push the crochet hook to the shaft part pull it out a little bit and now I'm gonna again make sure this gets flattened but we just need to kind of be aware of the direction for now I've been making these loops in a row I'm just going to kind of change the angle of how I'm holding this so I'm kind of holding it sideways now instead because when I flatten this I want this to flatten upwards so I'm literally kind of pushing it and flattening it so it's now going to sit upwards like this 
instead of continuing on the row that we were making. Because this is now starting the next row. So this is the bottom row, we could say the first one, and we're building row and row on top of that to make the bracelet longer. So this is then technically the first loop in that second row. I'm then gonna have my crochet hook through that loop, go over the wire, bring it back through to make a new loop here. And now, let's get this tail bit out of the way. Now, instead of just going, say, sideways, for instance, flattening it next to this one, we need to obviously make sure the row is also connected. So I'm gonna have my crochet hook in it, and then I'm gonna bring it down, my crochet hook, the very point of the crochet hook, down through the third loop that we made, or the second from the right, the second last one. I'm gonna bring it down through there. So that means my crochet hook is coming through the loop that we just pulled through there. And then before I kind of flatten it out or anything, I'm then taking my crochet hook and putting it through the third loop on the bottom row. And then I'm pushing my crochet hook again through to that shaft part. And that then kind of naturally flattens the loop that we just made out against the others, but it's now laying on top of that third loop from the previous row. So we're actually gonna have two loops on top of each other. You can see there. And then you just wanna hold on to this. So we have that first loop above the first loop on this new row above the last loop on the previous row. So at this point here, we're coming through the third loop on the bottom row with the loop that we made before. So it's doubled up. So I'm gonna go over the wire and bring the wire back through with me. Now, at this point here, I'm just kind of holding on to the loops so they stay in place as I'm bringing this wire through. You can see they're still laying flat on top of each other. And then pushing my crochet hook through still. Pulling it out a little bit. And now I'm twisting it like I were before, I was before, and then flattening it. So this loop now sits above this third loop on the bottom row where we just added another loop on top. And we now have two loops on the top row. So, bring the wire through to create a new loop. Pull it out a little bit, and now we need to repeat the same. So that means this loop that we just pulled through comes down. We're kind of moving one step to the left, towards the left every time. So this means going through the second loop on the bottom row that we made, pushing the crochet hook through, and then taking the crochet hook over the wire on the back to bring it through. You see, it doesn't matter if you kind of slip out because the wire will hold its shape, so don't worry about that. Holding onto the loops here that are doubled up, while I then bring the wire through them to be able to make another loop so like that, you just kind of maneuver your loops in place however you need to. And then I twist the crochet hook and flatten it out. So this is now gonna create the third loop on the new row. Don't worry too much about how this looks just now because this is kind of just the initial loops that we're making. It can be a little bit messy. Now, we need one final loop on this row that we're making now. So that means I'll bring a loop through. And this one here, we need to come down to the first row, the previous row, which means going through the very first loop that we made. And then pull the wire through to be able to make the last loop on the top row. And then when you pull it out, twist the hook and flatten it by pushing it back a bit. And then here we now have, 
you can see the bottom row, you can see it's a bit messy, like I said, it doesn't matter. Bottom row, we have the four loops that we initially made in a row after each other. Then we start at the next row by making that first loop, but then crossing, kind of zigzagging down, up making a new loop down to the first row, up making the third loop and down and then make the fourth loop. So we now have four loops on both of these rows and like before you can take your crochet hook and just go back through them if you wanna kinda wanna neaten it up a bit and straighten anything out. You can use the crochet hook itself for that as well. Kinda get it back, get all the loops to the size of that shaft part of the crochet hook. So we end up with, let's do it with the last ones as well. Something that looks a little bit like this. So we have two rows with four loops on each. So this is how we start out making the bracelet. It's a bit different than how we're now gonna continue making the rest of it. So it's the same basic principle. We're gonna make another row and another row and another row. But what we're gonna do now is I just made this last row with four loops that I just showed you. This was the very last loop that we made. Now to make and start the next row, instead of doing it the same way as before, what I'm actually gonna do is flip the piece over. So now technically you could say we're working on the back compared to the front where we started out. And then I'm gonna put my crochet hook, it wasn't through while we flipped it. I'm gonna now put it through the same loop it was through before. So the very last loop that we just made before, we're just working with it from this side here. So I'm flip, taking the crochet hook out, flipping the piece and putting the crochet hook through the same loop but just coming from the other direction. And then I'm just repositioning my grip here. So I'm just holding on to the piece. Now I have a little bit more, more work to hold on to so it's a bit easier. But constantly holding right below the loop basically where my crochet hook is going through just to have the most control. Now for the next row here, what we're gonna do is the crochet hook is coming through, same principle, bring the wire through this loop to create another loop, push the crochet hook through and then just pull it a little bit, kind of open it up a bit more. Now instead of bringing this up and creating a new loop, what we're gonna do in order to kind of get some straight sides is bring this loop straight away over onto the next one in line, right next to the one that we were just coming through. So, the loop that I just made here is actually now laying on top of the one just to the left. So I have two loops on top of each other. And then I'm coming through, bringing the wire through. And as I'm doing that, holding on to these loops here, and creating another loop here by push, pushing the crochet hook through. Pull at it a little bit. And now in this case here, this loop that we just made, I'm now twisting my crochet hook and bringing it kind of upwards and backwards to lay flat next to the other ones. And this loop then sits kind of above these two loops that we just overlapped before, but also almost a little bit above that, but in between these loops and the next one. And then from there, pull the wire through, create another loop. In this case here, we then take this loop with the crochet hook through it, bring the crochet hook down through the next loop in the previous row. So that's the third one from the right next one that we haven't used yet. Push the crochet hook all the way through. So now again we have two loops laying on top of each other. So that's the same principle of making sure the rows are connected like the initial two rows, but how we're starting a new row is just slightly different. Now bring the wire through to make another loop. And in this case here, turn the crochet hook 
and flatten it. So this creates the next loop on the new row. So that means we have three now because the first loop in this row is actually the last loop, you could say, from the previous one. So we now just need to make one more. That means we need to bring the wire back through. And also we have one loop left in the previous row that we need to connect to. So that means the loop we just made, put the crochet through that and go through that last loop in the previous row. So we have two loops on top of each other there. And then hold on to those. I'll bring in the wire through to create a new loop. and twist your crochet hook so the point goes away from you and then kind of push it backwards to flatten it out. Now what you'll probably find is that it's going to look a bit messy and obviously with practice it'll help but also it sometimes kind of just looks a bit messy in the beginning until we kind of start it gets naturally neatened up as we continue. So we now have four loops on the new row because the first one, that's the one we literally just made, that's here. The next one you can see here. What I like to do after every row is then go back through the row, each loop here, and kind of just use a crochet hook to reshape them if I need to, but also make sure they're sitting in the right position. So the very last loop is the one that we started out with here, we just went straight through to the next one. That now becomes a part of this new row. It's technically the loop from the previous row. But these are now our four loops that we're going to use for the next row. So now I have my first three rows here. To now change direction to be able to start making the next row, again we need to flip the piece. So I'm just going to flip it around like this and you bring this length of wire around the side and you just put your crochet hook through the very furthest one to the right in this case because that was the very last one that we made on the other side there so like I said before same principle as the previous row put it through the same loop but just from the other direction and we're now in position to start the next row and here I'm also just going to make another row of just loops with wire I'm not starting the beads just yet because I just want a little section here of my piece with just the wire so we can use that to finish off at the end but then same principle here you have your hook coming through the loop that go over the wire bring the wire back through and then push the hook through to create a new loop open it up a bit and here the first one we need to come straight through the next loop just to the left of it so the very next one and then go over the wire, bring it back through and then this loop here we now use a crochet hook to twist and flatten it, kind of push it backwards so this becomes the first loop that we kind of added on this row but it's technically the second loop because the first one is this one right here that's going to also be part of this row that we're just making now. So go through, make another loop. This one now needs to come down through the very next loop on the previous row. And you can see this loop here that's sticking up is actually sitting kind of between the two loops on the previous row, which is how the whole thing is being built. Just grab onto that, make the loop and then again this one push it up so this is now the third loop in the next row bring the wire through this loop comes down and comes through well the loop doesn't but the crochet hook with the loop on comes through the final loop on the previous row so we can then also bring the wire through and make the final loop on the current row 
by flattening that out. And you can see this is now the situation. And you can get the impression that you can see the loops, but it is a little bit messy. So this is why I always like to go in. I've now completed this row here. I just go through, push my crochet hook through to that widest part of the shaft, not the grip, but just before it. And also kind of pull it up a little bit. So a little bit away from the piece. Don't pull hard, but just a little bit. So we're kind of lifting the loops a bit and just straighten them out, straightening them out. So we're making sure they're sitting next to each other. Especially that last one as well, bring them in. So we can clearly see these four loops in this newest row sitting nicely next to each other. So we have a little section here. The final row we just did is four loops. So that means we have to turn our piece to start the next row. So just flip it around, put the crochet hook back through the final loop that we just made. Now it's in this row as well that I actually want to start adding my beads because this little section that we have is fine for finishing off the ends. And also I want to make sure I add my beads on the same side throughout. So obviously we have two sides. You could say there's a front and a back. Ultimately it doesn't really matter, except for now is when we need to add the beads. We need to make sure they get added on the same side. So that means every time I have my piece in this direction, you can kind of refer to the tail, what side that's on. That's when I know I want to add a bead. So just to show you here, grab onto your wire again. Now starting out the row in the same way, bring the wire through and go straight through the next loop. Bring the wire through to create another loop. And then we need to twist the hook and flatten it to create the loop that's kind of sticking away from the others. And then bring the wire through there. Put your hook through the next loop in the previous row. And this is the point now where I'm gonna grab the very first bead that's available. So just a single bead. And we need to then bring it all the way up to sit, basically where it can't go any further. So sit right next to the crochet hook and right against the loop that we made previously. Now what you need to make sure is we kind of just continue in the same way. Nothing changes other than adding a bead, but we obviously just need to account for the fact the bead is there. So make sure it's sitting up here so it's not falling down anywhere. And then I'm going to bring the crochet hook through over the wire, making sure the bead is kind of trapped there between the crochet hook and the piece and then grabbing the wire on the other side of the bead, which then traps it in place, and then bringing it through the loops. Now here where we add the bead, it can be a little bit trickier to kind of bring the wire through, but you'll find your rhythm as you do it more. And then you'll see that now has trapped this bead in place on this side of the piece. So the opposite side to us, basically the side pointing away from us. Pull the wire bit to create then the next loop and that comes up to sit next to the other one that was kind of sticking away and technically also next to the bead you could say. Now bring the wire through to create another loop to now come down through the last loop in the previous row. bring the wire through so we can then also create the last loop in the current row, flattening that up. So now you can see it even looks a little bit more messy now because of that bead. So I take my crochet hook, go through one loop at a time and I make sure that I straighten them out, pull them up, if I need to. And here we just need to make sure obviously this bead can sometimes block that loop. So you just want to put the crochet hook through. 
kind of open it up a bit. And again, that last loop is the one from the previous row because that's how we end up with the straight sides. So that's this row here with the bead added in. And now I want to flip the piece to start the next row. So I'm just turning it around. And because the row we just made had a bead on, the next row I'm gonna make is not gonna have a bead because that would then sit on the back of the piece. So that means we now make a row without a bead. What I also then like to do sometimes is kind of just the row here with the bead on, bring the crochet hook through from the front because that kind of pushes the bead down just a little bit and neatens it up so we can more easily see the loops here and get through them. Now start the next row in the same way. Make your first loop that goes straight through the next one. And then make your next loop that now comes up as a new one. The next loop goes down on top of the next one in line on the previous row. And just again, gently bring it through. The bead can be a little bit in the way, but just kind of maneuver around it. The next loop comes up to be the third loop on the new row. Pull the way through to then bring it down into the last loop on the previous row. So we then also create the last loop on the current row. Just need to bring the wire all the way through. But that's what I mentioned before, the benefit of it being wire, it's not gonna come undone just because your crochet hook maybe slips out of the loops or anything. It's all gonna stay in place. And then that one comes up to be the fourth loop. And as you can see, it looks kind of messy. So I straighten it out by going through one loop at a time. Something like that, and then we turn the piece. Pull the loops upwards a little bit. So they're sitting more in line with each other. And this row here, because the bead you can see is on the side pointing away from us, and now on this row that I'm making, wanna add another bead. So basically every other row, I'm adding a bead and it's always on the same side. So just to show you again, the first loop here comes through the very next loop next to it, well on top of, and then the next loop goes above to create the second loop in the new row. And then this loop here comes down, with the hook goes through the third loop on the previous row. But before I then bring the wire through, this is the point where I'm grabbing the next bead, just a single one, making sure it sits up here where it can't go any further. And then take my crochet hook over the wire, making sure that bead is trapped in place and pull the wire through. And you can see the bead sits there. And then this loop comes up and sits next to the other one. That's the new row. This is the third one. The next loop goes down into the last loop, or onto rather, it's the loop, hook, sorry, that goes through the loop in the previous row. So we can then create the last loop in the current row. 
and then that's this row looks a bit messy turn your piece and then just straighten the loops out so the first one and then the one here kind of the loop hiding behind the bead where I then put my crochet hook through which also helps push the bead down a bit and then helps them sit more aligned with each other the next loop just pull it up a bit and the last loop so we have them sitting so we can identify them all and use them to create the next row and the next row we make without a bead because that would be on the back of the piece so otherwise you just continue making this next row here in the same way that I showed you before and you literally continue like this alternating between the rows of adding a bead and not adding a bead so I kept going in the same way here until I reached the length that I want and on the end I just made a few more rows without adding beads in so basically all I've done is kind of measured it against the very beginning to make them the same length as you can see there so I've reached a point here where I've completely finished the length now I just kind of like finishing off the end here so it becomes a little bit more robust so I have my four loops and my wire around the side here I'm going to bring it around the back then put my hook through the first loop and then bring the wire through just like before and then pull a loop out go straight through the next one and pull a loop out and instead of now making a new row to extend the bracelet further which like I have been doing I'm just going to keep going all the way across so pull the loop out go into the next loop and then pull a loop through so as you can see I'm kind of working away from the right side of the bracelet over towards the left going through those loops in the row that we just made and then through the very last one catching that like this so you can see it kind of just stabilizes the final loops here a bit more there's no other reason because obviously I'm going to add my ribbon ends anyway so it doesn't have to be too neat or anything just to kind of stabilize it and what I like to do is just this final loop I've already cut off the wire and removed any excess beads that I don't need to use I'm just going to pull it all the way through so it's now coming out there and this is now the whole length complete and we have our beads running all the way along in the middle as a nice feature so then I'm just going to get rid of the excess wire here because obviously we don't want that sticking out so I'm just going to get to the very end and right now the wire is coming out kind of at the front of the bracelet so I'm just going to bring the very end through around the side and through the same loop that it's coming out of so I'm basically just kind of coiling this end around and I'm just going to repeat let's do it a couple of times it's really just to secure it so we can cut off the excess safely and then just bring it around again like that and then that's fine and then I'm just going to cut off the excess on the back here and then just make sure that I'm squeezing down the very end and of course you just want to repeat with the wire and that we have on the other end that we started out with then to finish off the ends I'm grabbing my ribbon end here just one at a time and then this is going to end up sitting right on the end of the bracelet and you can also see it kind of covers up all the very final loops there so if anything has gotten a little bit messy don't worry about that but obviously in order for this to be fastened securely what I'm going to do is add some glue so I'm using this E6000 it works great with metal I find and it also dries clear I'm just gonna use a toothpick here get a little bit on there doesn't have to be too much 
it's just gonna come spilling out anyway, but I'm gonna then put this on the inside of the ribbon end. So cover the walls on the inside. You don't have to fill it out completely or anything because it's gonna get clamped down anyway. And obviously the end of the bracelet is gonna still need to fit inside. So something a bit like that. Now I have some left on my toothpick and what I like to do with that is go and just kind of get it in between all the nooks and crannies and the different loops and wires here and the very end of the bracelet because when I then add the two together and obviously the glue dries it's going to really adhere nicely so I'm going to take my ribbon end place it on the end and then I like to hold the bracelet in my hand and then put a finger on either side of the ribbon end to kind of hold it in place a while I then take my flat nose pliers and go in and start to clamp this down now I don't like to go in and just in one place squeeze it tight I like to do it gradually so a little bit at a time going from side to side I feel you've got the most control and when you're almost there I like to just take my fingers off make sure it still sits how I like it so it's straight and in the middle and then I go in and do my final squeeze and do it from the other side as well and I also like to go in from the sides and just kind of close them up nicely so there we go and it's already pretty secure in there but obviously you do want to leave the glue to dry as well it's going to be extra secure we then have our loop in that ribbon end that we can attach our findings to and of course you want to repeat on the other end as well so once you've added your findings your bracelet is ready to wear so I use different color combinations but I also use different gauges of wire so for the one I made in the tutorial, I used the 0.4mm wire, so that gives you a bit of a wider bracelet and also a bit of a more robust look to it. Now for the narrower bracelets, I used a 0.3mm wire, which will give you a finer look. But you can ultimately use either for the same technique, and it'll just give you a slightly different result. Now I will recommend if you're just starting out with wire crochet, using 0.3 is easier than 0.4 until you then get used to the technique. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial for this bracelet. Thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.